friends, Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, day three. We're in front of the one of the royal palaces here in Seoul, Korea. I'm gonna take you guys in. We're gonna see the changing of the guards, take some pictures, take some more video. Guys, I'm loving Seoul, Korea. You gotta come out here, man. First chance you get, jump on a plane, get out here. It is beautiful. There's a lot to do, a lot to eat, a lot to see. Full of fun. You've just got to love the architecture. Let's look at the detail up there, man. Yeah, there's the airway. On the inside of the college compound now, and I'm gonna go a little bit fast and then go back slowly so you guys can really take in. And you gotta love, look in the background, the beautiful mountains. It's an overcast day. It's probably about 14 degrees Celsius. It's a, it's a little bit cool, but I'm loving the cool weather. Um, this place is unreal, man. Again, on the other side, we just came through those gates. More of that beautiful architecture that I just love. Just look at the roof work, the tile work. To Babylon, and Babylon just chilling there, yes? Oh, we got some drums down there. I'm gonna head over to the drums. Gotta love the contrast. Just where this beautiful ancient palace is, skyscrapers, glass buildings. <laughs> Signs of times, man. It's gonna go in through the palace main doors there now and see what's going on. So this is where we're at, guys. Gyeongbokgung Palace. We're on the north side of the Han River. So this is considered old soul. <laughs> old soul. Listen to me like I write to rap. But anyway, it's, guys, let's go inside. So we're in, on the inside of the second courtyard now. Still I love that mountain in the background, man. man. We're inside the third courtyard now, and I believe this would be the main building. Well, it is the main building. This is where the the royal throne and everything else would be in here. I can only imagine how active this was and the people moving around it back in ancient times. All these courtyards filled with people, the pageantry, the swords, yeah, swords. Let's go take a peek inside. The throne room, right up in there. Wow, the artwork on the inside is simply stunning. Let's check the view from here.
영군 직설은 광화문 오른쪽에 있는 작은 직설로 광화문과 국복공을 지키는 군사들이 잠도 잡고 불령을 받아 북부도 서는 공간입니다. We're going into traditional tea house now. It's a little courtyard here. This is where you take your shoes off. Hello. And Taya Karat. Taya. Okay, we're from America. Con the event. Hello. And we're from two customers from Malaysia. So three or kind of an odd number of um, pine nuts on top. So some of you have one. Um, others have three. I hope I'm right. Yeah, odd number of pennants. Yeah. Yeah, let me just take a quick little video here. Guys, we're doing, we're making kimchi, right? Kimchi. Traditional kimchi. Mm. Traditional kimchi. What sort of flavors are we putting in there? Is he scallions? Is it scallions? We will explain for you later. Okay? She will explain to me. Just apple first. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I want the pink one. Uh, from generation to generation. So in the southern parts, it's much more saltier, and they use a lot of more um, seafood ingredients, and it's spicier as well. And then as you go up north, uh, the kimchi becomes a little bit more mild, milder and also less uh, spicy. So there's about 220 different types of kimchi, so it's not only the cabbage and the radishes. Uh, it could be any type of vegetable and or um, meats and seafood as well. So um, they change by season and also by region and it reflects the local tradition and also kind of the local family recipes. So there's lots of variations. Um, and I guess as a fermented food, it kind of has very similar roots to other fermented food products in the world. So pickles or um, sauerkraut. Uh, this is... Uh, Indian food. Oh, Indian food. Um, and also... In Chinese cuisine, um, you eat jajo, which is a radish, no, it's a vegetable, is it a root vegetable that's marinated and fer uh, fermented as well. So these are kind of the different fermented foods around the world. Korea has different variations and very um, uh, diverse, diverse uh, methods of preparation. And um, it could be used, kimchi, you could eat it just like last night where we just had it as condiments, but you could also have it in dishes. So the most common one is made out of with um, napa cabbage. And what you do is you, um, after you make it, you usually use the ones that are already fermented and ready to go. So not the fresh one, but you kind of leave it for up to a year or more. And then you can make stews out of it or um, sushi rolls or um, kimchi pancakes, which are really, really good if you use um, well-fermented kimchi. And you can make uh, fried rice and different types of um, foods out of it. And Napa cabbage is the best one to do um, those type of variations rather than the other radish or the cucumber because it doesn't break down as well. Ingredients that we're gonna use today. This, this is uh, Napa cabbage. It's sweet in texture and pretty crisp. But what they did was they, um, they brined it for eight hours in a very salty kind of mixture. So there was no water involved in the brining process. What they were trying to do was extract a lot of the um, moisture. So they just covered it with, I believe, this salt, which is coarse salt. Mm -hmm. It's very coarse salt. And they put it... Um, 
in a tub probably for about eight hours, and then you get this type of um, product. And next to it is scallions, so green onions, and then uh, water celery, which is a Korean, uh, specific Korean vegetable that has a slight bitter taste as well. And um, for sweetness, they have added apples, but sometimes you use Korean pears. But today we're going to be using apples. And then the radishes are on the, on the bottom. So this radish is like the daikon radish, so the bigger ones, rather than kind of the small ones. So these are a daikon radish that, has, um, that adds a lot of crispness and um, sweetness as well. And so the other ingredients, the seasoning, is um, this is shrimp paste, so it's fermented shrimp. It's kind of like a. This one is. Should I? You okay? Okay. This one is. Uh, it's water basically that has been steeped with glutinous rice, which is called tapsa. So they dunk a bunch of, um, probably like a handful of uh, glutinous rice in water, and they left it there until the water turned this color, and they're going to use that to add a little bit of starch. This one here is garlic, and the garlic is minced and finely ground. This one is ginger, and it's ground as well. Uh, this one right here in the small bottle is um, sour plum... Syrup. And sometimes, so when you ferment the sour plum, it becomes sweet, so it's not sour anymore. And then in the in the water bottle, there is uh, anchovy anchovy sauce, so it's fermented anchovies, so it has kind of this pungent fishiness to it. And then this one is sugar. Today we're going to be using brown sugar, but you can use white sugar or any other types of sugars. There. And then this one is just fine salt. Um, we were just using, we were showing this one so that you would know how the cabbages were being brined. And then this is the chili, uh, red chili flakes, which is going to add the spice here. Um, th this is the most basic ingredients that go into kimchi. Every family has a different tradition and different method. So this is just the basic, but you can add other things like oysters or... Um, different vegetables and whatnot, and it can go on and on and on. So um, we're going to do the most basic preparation. Uh, one thing you should know is that the chili pepper is a recent addition to kimchi, so it hasn't been this way for um, eternity. This is a new addition since the Colombian exchange of overflowing spoonfuls. Yeah. Oh, then you can mix it a little bit. Yeah. And then she's going to add some sugar to this mixture. So it's one third of a spoon of sugar. So you have to mix it very well right now because um, the better you mix it, the better the color will be later. It'll be a nice red. And a spoonful of the shrimp paste. And this is the anchovy sauce. And one spoon of the anchovy sauce. Um, garlic is one big spoonful. And then ginger is a small spoon. You go ahead and mix up your other one. This is the plum syrup. If you have the red chili salad, then as it goes, so there is my finished kimchi. So you chop everything up finely, and then you would add all these spices, the different flavor agents, layer it within each leaf of the Napa cabbage, and then put it to ferment or cure. And that's the, the mixture that's done over here.
Yeah. Just to make sure it's going to go it between off. the cabbages. We, we caught that. Our oh, first mac and kimchi. Yay! Let's have together. Yeah. One, two. So part of the traditional Korean dress. Kimchi. <laughs> this is our house. Kamsamida. Annyeonghi gaseyo. We're inside one of the more famous traditional pottery makers here in Seoul. We're on the north side of the Han River, Old Seoul. These are all handmade at this pottery company here. beautiful stuff. So something like this, it says 35000 so it's $35 basically because for one US dollar you get 1000 Korean dollars. some blue. The blue stuff is nice, man. We're outside this very famous soup restaurant here. We're just stopping for lunch now, and there's a huge line. I guess it must be a very popular spot. It is. There we go. <laughs> it is very popular. <laughs> you have to line up for it. Usually it's every day. Just like that, with the big yeah. lines? Every day. Uh, does, what time does the line start at? I don't know. Oh. Early in the morning, people come to... Just for the soup? Just for the soup. <laughs> okay. So there we go. I think we're cutting line. Don't worry with she. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> That's so yes, he's outside there? Yes, I think we're getting soup. We got some ginseng booze up in here, people. Sure. 
So there's a whole chicken in there, and it's still bubbling away because the earth nowhere. It's fiery. Afternoon, day three. Well, evening. We're at the Dunga Mall. D O O N G A. I hope that's how you pronounce it. There's floors and floors here of fashion you can get. Oh boy, anything for the entire family. The thing is, though, some of the prices are very extreme because of the high end quality of some of the stuff. Um, brand names, very, very expensive. But the selection, guys, jackets, winter jackets, jeans, shirts. Tay is going crazy with shoes and purses and bags and. Boy, you've got to check this place out, but walk with your credit card or cash. It is uh, kind of pricey. So, since we didn't sign an agreement for him, mm. we made him start in your phone for a video. Mm. I was in $5 for the second I'm shooting. This floor here is the guy's floor. And the jackets are just amazing. Man. The only thing is the Korean people are fairly small in size. So finding size for big old me is not the easiest thing. Just look at the cut on this jacket, man. That's a winter's jacket. And fellas, the shoes, man. Hmm. The most proper shoes I've seen in a long time. This is the restaurant district in Itaewon, and we're going for dinner at this noodle place here. I think it's owned by some famous Korean actor. And I guess this is where most of the nightlife is in Itaewon. Caters a lot to foreigners. Beautiful lounge here, man. Mm. And tell them all these stinking ass. Oh shit, I'm breathing. Yeah guys, I'm a little bit out of breath. To the cable car up to the Seoul Tower. But there's still a bit of walking to do. Chris here signing up day three. Seoul Tower. Quite an experience. You can see the entire city of Seoul from up here. So if you want to do that landscape, that sort of um, skyline off the city of Seoul, this is the place to be. reflection from the mirror here. We're on top of the Seoul Tower right now, inside the belly of it. Uh, you take an elevator and you come all the way up to the top. But that there, that is the city of Seoul. It's too bad there's a window here. Uh, I would have been able to show you guys much better. Beautiful skyline.